Hello and welcome to the Ameren. My name is Eric Caldwell. I'm the chief executive here. The Ameren on its property has a small pond uh, that we've opened up for hikers and birders to go visit. And that pond currently has no wildlife in it. And I was really excited to learn about the Arizona Game and Fish Department's program to introduce native species of fish to waterways in Arizona. And I'm excited to be joined today by Tony Robinson with the Arizona Game and Fish Department to talk about that program further. Uh, Tony, welcome and can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh yeah, so yeah, my name's uh, Tony Robinson. I am the uh, Gila River Basin Native uh, Fishes Lead uh, for Arizona. So I deal with uh, native fish projects throughout the Gila River Basin, which pretty much covers the southern half of the state below the uh, Mogollon Rim, all the way to uh, the Colorado River along the Gila River drainage. Could you explain to, to us about the Top Minnow and Desert Pubfish program that we're looking to participate in? Well, sure. um, the Top Minnow Pubfish program um, deals with two species of top minnow actually in Arizona. So the Yaki Top Minnow and the Gila Top Minnow and two species of pupfish, which are the desert pupfish and the keto Bikito pupfish actions. Uh, so all these species are endangered. We're trying to implement recovery actions uh, throughout Arizona so to help to hopefully get them in better situation than they currently are and maybe eventually to downlist and delist them. And to do that, we enlist various partners, uh, including federal, state agencies, and private landowners and organizations. How endangered are these fish and where can they be found naturally today? What populations still survive? The pupfish, for example. So there, like I mentioned, there are two species of those in Arizona. Uh, Keto Bikito is actually very restricted. So they're found over in Oregon Pipe National Monument at a place called Keto Bikito Springs. That springs actually flows uh, south into Mexico. So they're also present in Mexico. So what Arizona just had in the United States just has a very small population right there at Keto Bikito Springs. So as far as populations go, that's probably the, the fewest. Um, desert pupfish uh, doesn't have any naturally occurring populations left in Arizona. So its distribution range throughout the Gila River Basin, um, elevations below maybe 4,500 feet, all the way over to the Colorado River. And then in the Colorado River, it was actually found all the way up into about Needles, uh, California, and then down all the way into the, to the Gulf of California, or Sea of Cortez. And there's a still pretty large um, populations in uh, Mexico at uh, Laguna Salado. And there's a fairly large population over in California that's uh, associated with the Salton Sea. Gila Top Minnow was distributed throughout the Gila River uh, Basin. Again, the elevations below about 4,500 feet, um, all the way from in New Mexico. So there's records in the San Francisco River at Frisco Hot Springs in New Mexico. So, and then they were distributed at uh, kind of lower elevations and slow moving waters all the way to uh, the Colorado River and probably a little bit uh, near the Yuma area where the Colorado River meets in backwater and things like that. The Yaki top minnow is probably uh, more endangered in the United States because again, the, the range is restricted. So it's only really found in two uh, locations. Uh, Whitewater Draw down on the San Bernardino National Wildlife Refuge and then Black, Black Canyon. So Black Canyon's on the southeastern side of the uh, Chiricahua Mountains and uh, Whitewater Canyon is that kind of south of Wilcox Playa. Um, so that, and it also occurs down in, in Mexico, but for the United States, those are the only places, so it's pretty endangered in the United States. So how do agreements like this one with private landowners, like the Ameren Foundation, to put these uh, species into water features, uh, how does that help these species out? Well, it actually helps a lot. So we, we are under this, uh, Overall, it's called a safe harbor agreement for top minnows and pup, pup fish. Um, it's an agreement between the Fish and Wildlife Service and Arizona Game and Fish uh, to help so we can uh, enlist uh, non federal partners uh, to help in conservation efforts in Arizona. Um, and so that's the, that is the vehicle we use to get private landowners and foundations such as yourself on board to help with conservation of these species. 
by maintaining these smaller populations of fish and these uh, other water features, um, are you looking to try to preserve the genetic diversity of the fish? Are you trying to uh, reintroduce them at a later date using these populations? What, what are you trying to accomplish with the program? So there's, there's four conservation benefits we're looking from the Safe Harbor Agreement. And one is to uh, kind of have refuge populations for these species. Uh, to prevent against catastrophic loss in the wild and to use them as sources um, of fish to establish new populations elsewhere. Uh, the second is to just to, to count towards the species downlisting and delisting. Uh, the third is to um, try to get um, certain landowners to, to use a uh, top minnow or even pupfish for mosquito control instead of using mosquito fish, since mosquito fish are one of the biggest threats, especially to Gila, the top now. Um, and the mosquito fish have been spread across the West, and, and so we've, we'd like to transfer that over to be using the native species instead. And then the third, the fourth uh, concept, that how, the, how do we benefit from using this agreement is uh, for education and public education and information. So why does our pond at Ameren make a good habitat for these fish? And we're talking about introducing both the top minnow and the pup fish to our pond at Ameren. There's a number of features that make it worthwhile. Uh, first off, it, it's fishless, so it doesn't have any fish in it. That's great, especially no uh, non-native mosquito fish. Um, so that, that's a big plus. Plus it has a fairly large size. It's about uh, 0.2 acres in size. That's, that's pretty large really compared to a lot of ponds where we actually have them. We do like to have to try to get them established in larger ponds just because we, then we can have a larger population um, for, like I mentioned, for refuge or so we can pull individuals out of there as a source to establish populations elsewhere. It also has, um, it's got deep enough water um, and where it's deep enough, it becomes uh, thermally stable over the winter and summer months, so they, they we're not going to get too stressed out. Both of these uh, species, well, if we're talking about Gila top minnow and desert pupfish, they're actually both very tolerant, actually, to high temperatures, especially desert pupfish. Um, and there, then also your pond has a lot of, uh, it's got some uh, right riparian trees, cottonwoods, or in whatever the other trees there were there, ashes or willows, but not too many. If it's too shaded, uh, that the species doesn't do as well because then there's not enough planktonic uh, production in the pond, which they eat. Um, and it's got some emergent vegetation, uh, cattails, um, and other aquatic vegetation in there, and that's good to give them places to hide. So even though there won't be any fish predators, there's going to, going to be uh, avian predators that come in there and try to eat them. So they, having that places to hide is going to, going to benefit them also. Um, you brought that up a bit, but what is it that the fish like to eat? So they're, they're both uh, generalist, so omnivorous. So they eat quite a variety of um, uh, invertebrate, very small invertebrate animals. So um, Larval and nymphal stages of insects. They'll eat uh, small crustaceans, uh, uh, planktonic worms, and then also planktonic algae, uh, and even detritus and other uh, algae growing on rocks. So pick off of those too. Probably uh, probably feeding on diatoms. So it's really quite a varied diet. So the top minnow though tend to, to feed more towards the surface. The pupfish are kind of all over the place and picking stuff off the bottom a little bit more. Thank you very much for your time today, Tony, and coming out to evaluate us, and we really look forward to taking part in this program. Oh, thank you, and I'm, I'm really glad you uh, saw the piece that you did and, and contacted me, because it, it really was a, a good site, and I'm looking forward to getting the paperwork done and the fish in there.